Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier Dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Hey, Gabe, have you seen my flip-flop? Sorry, no, I'm, I'm looking for the keys. Oh, they're right there. No, those are yours. Where, where are mine? I don't know. Have you moved the leash? It was on the table, hun. I know, babe, but it's not there anymore. Have you seen the other flip-flop? I already said no. That was the white one. I'm missing one of the black ones, too. Can you just wear one of each? We're running late. Seriously? No, I wouldn't. Besides, they're both left. What? I only have the left side of each pair of flip-flops. Oh, I thought you meant they both left, like they departed on their own. Oh, gosh. Well, they might as well have. Wait. Where's the dog? Oh, this is us pretty much every day. Why, you ask? Because our dog is a kleptomaniac. Carson is the biggest little thief in the Western Hemisphere. He might be the biggest or the littlest, but apparently he's not the only one. That's right. Many puppy parents are also perpetual victims of adorable cuties who can't keep their fuzzy little paws or little mouths off of other people's things. It's an epidemic for sure. Absolutely. That's why we're bringing y'all some interesting background into why dogs, especially Jack Russell Terriers, like to steal things. Mm -hmm. As well as some helpful tips to deal with this annoying yet adorable issue. It's only adorable if they don't destroy what they're stealing. Yes, and and Carson hasn't destroyed a remote control or, or clothing in a while. If what he stole is made of paper, though, we can kiss it goodbye. So why do dogs steal things? TopDogTips.com answers this question saying, quote, when your dog steals things, it's never a malicious act. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll continue. There is always a logical explanation behind this fairly common canine behavior, and this thieving behavior can be corrected. All you need to do is figure out why do dogs steal things, or rather why your particular Fido is doing that, and we can go from there. Unquote. Just like you, I'm not sure about the never being a malicious act theory, because <laughs> Carson <laughs> is vindictive. <laughs> he holds a grudge he like does. I've never seen before. And he uses the stealing of things as a form of manipulation <laughs> to yeah. get what he wants. Anyway. <laughs> But he's usually stealing, I would say, if you really think about it, for one of the following reasons. Number one, a dog steals to get your attention. Yes and yes, Carson gets especially bold in his stealing when he wants our attention, especially if he needs to go potty yeah. or it's dinner time and we're just not paying attention or if he wants to go on a walk, he'll take something to get our attention. He has a routine, a schedule, and if we deviate from that, he'll let us know by yeah, taking right. something that is valuable to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number two, a dog steals because they need mental stimulation, especially smart breeds like Jack Russell's who need more than a comfortable place to lie around all day long. For some cool ways to mentally stimulate your pups, you can check out our episode on the latest in dog enrichment from September 6th. Number three, a dog steals to have fun. <laughs> Carson, yeah. <laughs> I think this is so true. Carson doesn't like it when we're glued to our phones or the TV or things like that. So he will steal the remote control. He will steal our phone. And he starts to play. Like if sometimes when he'll steal a sock, he'll throw it in the air. You yeah. know, like it's, he's like, come <laughs> he'll on. He'll play fetch by himself. Say, hey, look how fun this look is. Don't you want to do this instead? Yeah. Yeah. Dogstrust.org.uk has some great suggestions about how to redirect a dog's energy if they have a thieving problem. Number one, provide physical and mental exercise. We always say a tired puppy is a well-behaved puppy. So going for regular walks, running around off-leash in a safe space like your backyard or a dog park, that's a great start. Yep. You can also play enrichment games like the ones available online, or you can always Google dog enrichment for some great ideas. You can also try the sniff game we talked about a few episodes ago, where you hide treats around the house and have them wear themselves out, smelling around for them. Number two, 
Make sure the stealing behavior is not rewarded. Dogs Trust says, quote, dogs will do anything that works out well for them again and again. So if your dog enjoys gaining your attention by stealing things, the best thing to do when they steal is to completely ignore them as long as it's safe to do so, unquote. So unless they nick something dangerous, simply ignoring them will do the trick. And it pretty much worked out for us, I think. It has worked, but I also feel like I have a hard time ignoring him because it's kind of turned into a game for myself. Okay. <laughs> right? Like when he grabs a sock or something from the closet, I go, I'm going to get you. And <laughs> he like runs faster. Yeah. And I think he likes that. So I'm rewarding the wrong person. You are. So <laughs> maybe you're the source of our problems. Well, <laughs> it definitely could be the case. Okay. Number three, always reward good behavior. Okay. Hmm. So when your pup is doing something proper, like entertaining themselves with an actual dog toy, shower them with verbal praise and treats. I love it when Carson entertains himself. It blesses my heart to no end. (laughs) Yes, he just finds something and he chews on it. Or, you know, we we make those Frankenstein toys. So he'll find one with a toy inside a toy and he'll work on getting it out on his own. It's fantastic. It shouldn't be hard. They're strewn about the house (laughs) (laughs) at all times. So True. Number four, teach your dog to swap things. There's usually something your dog would like to play with more than whatever they stole. I've even used YouTube recordings of dog squeaky toys to steal Carson's attention. He'll come running in from a different room and Becca can go retrieve whatever it was that was stolen. This was back when he was destroying things. Right. And we had to get him away. Yeah. We also say, do you want some peanut butter? And he usually will come running. And worst case scenario, I'll take one of those rotisserie chickens and I'll, the whole <laughs> container and I'll just open the lid and I'll kind of waft the smell around a room and he'll come barreling out as soon as he smells that chicken. He loves chicken. <laughs> I think we're just doing things the wrong way. So maybe uh, read we the articles. We are. Don't listen to us. <laughs> read the articles. <laughs> Whatever we've done, or maybe <laughs> just because he's maturing, he doesn't destroy things anymore. So there is progress being made, whether it's by our own accord or otherwise, but it's good. Okay. It's good. Yeah, let's keep packing ourselves on the back. Okay. <laughs> so what's next? Oh, yeah, it's Insta Dog of the Week. Woohoo! Today we have Jack Russell Winston. <laughs> Woohoo! You can find Winston at Jack Russell Winston. That's W I N S T E N. And he is so cute. I can't even take it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So his bio is pretty simple. He was born December 13th, 2020. So he's not even a year old. And he ha- they have some cute emojis across the top. They have the dog paws. They have the battery. Like, full battery. Full battery. <laughs> and you know what that means. <laughs> he's like the Energizer Bunny. He, he won't run out of steam. And there's a Frisbee and some stars. Like he sparkles. He sparkles. <laughs> Let's see what else. Winston has this adorable nose mm. that is... Uh, speckled, I would say. Like, it's black and white. Like, it's not a completely solid black nose. Yeah. It's really cute. Kind of like we said a while back about how the dog's nose print is like a human's fingerprint. Right. Like, he has a very unique looking. Yeah, because it's different colors as well. Pattern. Yeah. So cute. It starts out, of course, with him as a puppy, and we see him grow and get bigger. And they just take really great pictures they get down on his level a lot <laughs> so mm. they're really good angles <laughs> yeah, they're laying on the floor to get these you shots. can tell it's yeah. so, they're but they're great so you get it's almost like you're there with a dog like you're getting the dog's perspective of life <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> gabe what's your favorite picture oh, out man. of all of these it has to be the one where he has the the side eye, right? <laughs> he's staring <laughs> at the camera. You could tell like he was caught doing something or he's about to unleash that full battery charge and run around. It's such a mischievous look that Carson does sometimes too. I just love it. He's in Colombia. Mm. So uh, this, yes. this landscape is just, it's unique and different and, and very green and very pretty. And what I also like, you know, is because he's, He's got his brown eye, but he's mostly white. Mm, yeah. And so 
all of their pictures have these bright, vibrant colors, whether it's the rug or the blanket that he's on or the green landscape. And then he just stands out, you know, his little white body against these beautiful, bright colors. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. Like most Jack Russells, the pictures either have him looking mischievous with his facial expressions, or he's running around, or he's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have three modes, mischief, running, and sleep. There are several pictures of him standing on a windowsill and looking out a window, or mm. standing on the edge of it. It looks like they have a balcony with a clear wall, and he's standing on the edge of that looking through. And he's just so curious. He's monitoring his domain. Mm-hmm. And if you just scroll all the way down to the beginning, when they first start and he's a baby, he's got that little round puppy belly. It's (laughs) so cute. Be sure to add Jack Russell Winston to your Instagram feed because he is the cutest little thing and you will want to see that speckled little nose every day. Aloha Mama Apparel wants to spread the spirit of aloha. Genesis Beloth, the creator of Aloha Mama Apparel, was born on the mainland and resides in Southern California. But she cherishes her Hawaiian culture and honors the half of her family that lives on the island. She loves being a mama and a designer. At Aloha Mama, they know being a mama is hard work, but it's the best work. That's why they style mamas and kiddos in apparel that is bright and filled with beachy vibes. For the cutest casual attire celebrating the spirit of aloha, go to shopalohamama.com. That's shop, A-L-O-H-A-M-A-M-A.com. Shopalohamama.com. Now it's time for Puppy Parent Replies. Kleptomania is common among all breeds, but Jack Russells are the absolute masters of thievery. That's true. That's why we asked fellow Jack Russell parents, is your dog a cute little thief too? What do they like to steal? Can you guess what the number one answer was? Food? Socks, actually. Okay, that makes sense. uh, Yes, I totally believe that. But I'm sure if they were tall enough to reach on top of counters and tables, food would be the number one answer. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) They'd eat all the food and then take your socks. And then take your socks. Absolutely. So anyway, we got a lot of varied, awesome puppy parent replies. So let's dive in. Petra W says socks. Of course. (laughs) Scrunchies, towels, and paper. Yes. Lisa G says, anything out of people's pockets, and of course, toilet paper, tissues, and anything that falls out of the trash. Basically, anything that falls on the floor is theirs. Mm-hmm. I get you, Lisa. I get you. Lori A says, absolutely. I had to put outdoor lattice around the bottom of my bed. She would put everything under there. <laughs> yes, they hoard. They, they do. They hoard all their stolen items. Carson does the same thing. Yeah. And sometimes I reach on there to get something and I find two or three other things and I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Blaine L says, we call ours the sniper. All right. They just wait for the opportune moment and take your sock. Yeah. He's good like that. They sit and watch and they wait till you leave something behind. Yes. <laughs> Elizabeth R. says, when people would tell me how cute our Frankie is, I would answer, thank you, but he's a thief. (laughs) (laughs) Vivian W. says, anything out of pockets. I tell guests to empty your pockets before you sit or don't leave coats anywhere that they can reach. (laughs) That that takes thievery to a whole new level. He's a pickpocket. (laughs) He's a pickpocket. (laughs) Oh, uh, man. I, I know Carson would do that if you put leave a purse on a couch or something. Oh, right? yeah. He's going to definitely get in a purse. But I yeah. never thought about pockets. That's hilarious. KJC says, socks, pens, anything left on the coffee table. That's why we don't use our coffee table. It's pointless. Yeah. 
<laughs> Us say. too. <laughs> you can't leave anything anywhere, really. Our coffee table is gathering dust in the mm-hmm. garage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no point of having it. But I would also add that that's where our kitchen table and island has so much stuff on it most of the time. Yeah, we're trying to keep it away. And we keep it up high. <laughs> Patricia F. says, nothing at all. I can leave anything lying around. Her sister, on the other hand, was a consummate thief. Shoes, teddy bears, nothing was sacred. Yeah. <laughs> teddy bears. I guess, yeah, I guess it depends on the dog. Absolutely. Vicky W. says, my Jack steals socks when she gets excited. Every day her daddy comes home from work, she goes crazy and does 100 laps around the flat. And when she's done, you'll find her laying beside him with a sock in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I like the excitement when I come home. It's nice. Sweet, yeah. Jillian D. says, socks, definitely. Tissues are better if they're snotty. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. And food always. Ollie ran off with a dead mouse this morning while his dad was emptying traps in the shed. <gasps> he brought it to me in the house. Ugh. Oh, yeah. And he's like, look, mom, look what I found. Well, I guess that's better than just eating it straight away. Yes. And in regards to the snotty tissues, this might be entirely too much information. I'm going to say it. So <laughs> I have a little bit of allergies, you know, allergy issue here in Texas. And so I blow my nose a lot. And so when we're sitting here recording, <laughs> you can cut this if you want. <laughs> no. Keep going. When we're sitting here recording or right before we record, I have to blow my nose because you don't want to hear me snorting and sniffing and all this stuff, right? Well, if I leave my chair out, he gets up in that chair immediately and that's the first thing he grabs. Gross. I know, but it's the truth. I would change the word if because you always leave your chair pulled out <laughs> and I'm in here editing and he come, He knows the moment you leave this room that there's <laughs> just some snotty prizes waiting for him on the table and I'm like diving over the table. <laughs> it's gross. I'm sorry. Everybody <laughs> gets to touch the snotty tissue. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy C. says, must be an Oliver thing. I think that's her dog, yeah. Oliver. <laughs> and she includes a pic of her pup holding a pair of stolen reading glasses. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is the worst yeah. when you get a hold of a pair of glasses. Especially brand new ones. That's definitely when the rotisserie chick is coming out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't want to buy new glasses. <laughs> yeah, that would be expensive if those get chewed up. Janice L. says, the neighbor's toys. Now, oh. Carson, oh man, talk about a sniper or a pickpocket, especially when we go to the dog park. He'll take other people's toys. They're sitting there having a nice time as a family, them and their kids and their dog, and he'll go and take their toy <laughs> and run to the other side of the park, and they're chasing him. Can never catch him, of course. And I'm just like, uh, sorry, sorry. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I can't catch him either, so you just got to wait for his battery to drain. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. And lastly, Ava M. says, yep, he stole my heart from the moment I met him. That's absolutely right, Ava. If your pup is a bit of a burglar, it's a common issue that can be addressed by proper training. Socks and knickknacks, they can be retrieved or replaced. No big deal. But once a pup steals your heart, you'll never get it back, nor will you want to. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun, dog-loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. We'd love to connect with you online at jackrussellparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrussellparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.